Bree Conan, <laughs> good to chat to you. Can you tell us where we are today? Um, so this is sort of about a minute down the road from my house. I bring Winston here sometimes to go for a walk. Um, yeah, but it's just a nice place to sort of get away and uh, have a little bit of a think. Well, Winston is a very good boy. He's been good at the moment. Yeah, touch wood. You might have jinxed me there. Um. <laughs> so he's a black Labrador. How old is he? He is, I was trying to work this out before, he was born in September 18th, so he's a little bit over a year, um, almost 18 months, so yeah, he's starting to settle down a little bit, but still puppy dog phase. He's adorable, and he lives in a very busy household full of footballers yeah. and your partner Luke. Can you tell us what that's like? Just around the corner, you've got Jesse Wardlaw and Orla O'Dwyer, our Irish recruit, with you alongside Luke, your boyfriend. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's an interesting dynamic there. I think Jesse's 20, Orla's 21, so they're pretty young. Um, but Wait a minute, how old are you? <laughs> I'm 25 now. I'm, I'm starting to breach the top <laughs> top of our age bracket right here. Um, I think I'm middle pack at the moment. Like, you're obviously, you know, yep. up the tip. Thanks but. for mentioning that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like living with teammates? Obviously, you're talking about the age gap, but being teammates as well, we, we pretty much see each other every day of the week, yeah. if not twice a day. Yeah. What's it like coming home to football teammates? Can you separate the two or separate life and footy or is it all just a fair bit of footy? Yeah, it's hard sometimes. Our house is um, pretty big, so you can sort of get away. Jesse's down the Gold Coast every two seconds and all the sort of is on the phone to family a lot. And then, yeah, I hardly get to see Luke out of all of them, which, you know, is not, not ideal, but yeah, we make it work, so. We both work throughout the day and then when I get home from training after work, it's just like sleep. <laughs> you mentioned work, you're a physio now, just come out of pretty much uni and, and into a full-time job. What's it been like transitioning into that? Yeah, I'm pretty lucky where I'm at. I think um, it's a really good team at the clinic I'm at and um, a lot of experienced heads around there for me to sort of learn off and um, get more experience working at a clinic. Um, within the teams, I think um, Andrew takes care of the bullets and bandits and um, Australian diving and swimming, so it's pretty cool um, to get to work with some of those athletes as well. Um, but yeah, I think I'm definitely learning every day, so that makes coming to footy and stuff just a brain overload almost. But yeah, it's good. I wouldn't have it any other way. So playing wise. I don't think many people realise that you started playing footy at a very young age. Yeah. Um, growing up on Magnetic Island of all places, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, out of all places, starting at five, five to six, I still have this um, photo of my first football team. My feet sort of don't touch the ground, I'm on the front bench. Um, <laughs> very cute, but uh, yeah, I started playing with all three of my siblings, Cara, Alyssa and Dirk, we all played in the same team. <laughs> Um, for a little bit there, it was very funny. Uh, and then played with the Magnetic Island Magpies till I was about 13, 14, I think, till I couldn't play anymore. Um, and then, yeah, started playing for North Cairns Tigers for a few years after I had a break. So I travelled to Cairns every weekend. Um, What's the trip, Magnetic Island to Cairns? Uh, the ferries, about 20, 25 minutes, but then to Cairns, um, another four hours drive on top of that. Oh my goodness. And then, yeah, you're playing in the afternoons. Lucky, luckily enough, I had somebody I could travel with, but yeah, you get back pretty late and pretty fried of a night. How old were you then? Four and a half hours each way to play footy? Yeah, I think I was about 16, 17, so it was the last couple of years of school I played. And then obviously moving down here was a lot closer, <laughs> a little bit of a dream. Yeah, so it was, yeah. So, so being at school and playing, travelling that far to play footy, what were the goals and aspirations at the time? Because you're obviously putting a heap into it, but there was no AFLW even on the horizon. Yeah. What, what was there for you to aim for and what was the motivation? I don't know. I just loved footy, I guess. Um, I tried every other sport under the sun. Hockey, <laughs> soccer, um, swimming. I tried surf lifesaving for a fair chunk of my time growing up. Swimming, never a great swimmer, so I don't know. I just liked footy and was relatively good at it so I stuck with it and I'm very glad I did now but yeah nothing yeah just love for, love for the game. Advantage will be paid Conan runs to 50 goes to Frederick Traub again she read it beautifully it bounces over the back and I think it's through for another one. 
So you played state footy mm. as a teenager for Queensland when it was not necessarily age grouped, it was all adults playing against whoever was pretty much there. So how old were you when you represented Queensland? Oh, I think I, I think there was one under 16s team that I played for and one under, or a couple of under 18s teams, but I started playing for them when I was like 13 or something. Wow. Um, and then I think I made my first women's national team in when I was 16 and that was up in Cairns. Um, yeah, and yeah, a bit of a well win. I didn't I didn't think I got too much game time, but good boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's finished eating all the bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be pleasant this afternoon. <laughs> nah, but yeah, so I think I um, was pretty lucky to get picked in some of those sides and just seeing how women's footy's evolved. I know I wasn't quite as into it as you at that stage, but um, a fair age gap, mate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I got to see that sort of difference between then and now, which is yeah, massive. And speaking of now, if you've been a part of the Lions, you're one of the original eight that we've got. So first ever Lions team and now still at the club in, in its fourth season and in the leadership group. Yeah. Um, we've had a fair bit of um, success, you could say, in the first couple of seasons. Mm -hmm. Last year was challenging and then we've lost a lot of experience since. How do, you, how do you see us going into 2020? Um, to be honest, I don't know. It's really hard, um, especially with the way the competition's structured. Um, the player movement between teams is just, yeah, you couldn't, the punters must be having a nightmare because I wouldn't be able to bet on it. Mm. Um, you just got no idea until you kick off round one and then it's a whirlwind season and you're hitting finals by, by the time you sort of take a breath. Um, so, yeah, uh, I don't know, I couldn't pick it, but I like the group we've got at the moment. Um, and I like the people we've kept and we've, we've kept around the group. So, um, good bunch this year. So, either way, it's going to be fun, I think. Mm. And for you personally, um, obviously it's a really good group to be around. Um, Winston reaps the benefits of that sometimes with a few treats. <laughs> but um, you were injured coming into the season last year, just yep. a poorly timed pre-season injury, mm, um, collision very. injury, and, and now obviously fit and firing. Yeah. Um, you must be excited for round one, which is very close. Yes, I am. No, um, I've had a relatively uninterrupted pre-season, touch wood. Um, but yeah, I think everybody's fitter and stronger than ever, so we should be ready to go by round one. Well, one more thing I want to ask you about, again, you mentioned your brother and sister's um, growing up and playing a lot of sport together. You've got a pretty successful sporting family. Relatively. <laughs> um, yeah, we've, we've all dispersed over the last year actually. Um, we used to all be in sort of the Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast, Brisbane region. Mum and Dad's still up on the island, which they love. <laughs> um, but yeah, Dirk's moved down to Melbourne this year to play in the VFL for uh, Port Melbourne. Unreal. Um, yeah, so he's stoked about that. Uh, Lissa's Moved out to Longreach um, to start her first job as a dietitian. Uh, she used to be um, really into her surf life saving, represented Australia internationally. Um, and then my sister Cara, who lives on the Sunshine Coast, plays for the Sunshine Coast Lightning, so um, she's getting a fair bit of game time this year. And they made the grand final, but was we're unfortunate to miss out last year, which I can relate to. Um, yeah. But yeah, she's killing it at the moment. She's working really hard, so she deserves what she's what she's going to get this year, I think. So, how does a family from Magnetic Island become so successful in the sporting and and off the field? You, you guys are, yep. you know, just absolute machines. It seems. Yeah, there must be something in the water. No, <laughs> I don't know. Seriously, um, I think it's testament to our parents. Like the island, there's. To be honest, not a whole heap going on over there. We have a junior school, not a lot of sporting teams. Maggie Island Magpies are still going, but that's about it. Um, yeah, I think we were just lucky with the way we were brought up. My mum and dad, very hard working. They still own um, a business on the island, so they're massively supportive of everything we do and they gave us every opportunity we could to do what we loved growing up. So yeah, I think it's, Probably down to those two. Um, oh, hello, getting love from Winston. 
Winston <laughs> loves my pants too. <laughs> <laughs> well, we really appreciate the chat, mate. It's um, when you talk about your family like that, obviously you can't choose your family and you've been lucky in that sense, but um, you, I think you're one of the hardest workers in our group and you can see how passionate and driven you are. So thanks for sharing your story and, and a little bit of Winston. Winston, thanks for eating everything underneath <laughs> our feet. Yeah, he's um, actually mowed the lawn for us around here. <laughs> oh, and he's tired. He knows how to look cute sometimes. <laughs> No treats. <laughs>